Welcome back to Little Bits of Lisp. This time we're going to look at multiple value return. And while there's quite a bit of detail we can go into this, we're going to do a very kind of light skim. Normally, when we write functions, uh, let's see, we take an x and a y, and we're producing x plus y. Let's compile that and run it with 10 and 20. We get 30. That's what we expect. Most of our expressions, most of our functions and things like this are going to be returning a single value. But Common Lisp does support returning multiple values. So we, we're going to have a look at that. So to return multiple values, you say values, and then you go through and provide multiple things. So we're going to return the addition of x and y and also uh, x and y multiplied. And it's not value, it's values. Got to type the things correctly if you want them to work. So let's clear that and try again. This time you'll see in our REPL we've got two return values. Now this isn't a list of values. I'm going to show the difference. We do test one. This is also a valid program, but this is returning one thing. And that one thing is a list containing two things. This is different. This is returning two separate results. And this is very important. Um, it's a nice language feature to have because it means if you're actually interested in returning a set number of things, um, you don't have to just put it in a, another data structure, put it in a list, put it in a vector, put it in an object to return it, to immediately unpack it again, or to immediately destructure it, for example. Um, if what you're wanting to say is, hey, this thing returns two things, return two things. Um, and we'll see how to deal with, uh, to receive those in a second. Uh, so yeah, the first thing is, this is different from returning a list. And that's important to note. Um, now, obviously, we're going to need to be able to use these. So let's say that we want to call uh, test with x and x times 2. So let's call this, call test, oh yeah, test 1 with 10 and 20. When we run this, whoops, I've got a problem. Yes, of course, because test 1 only takes one argument. Sorry about that. So let's clear this. We write test 1 and we pass in, let's just pass in 20. So we're now getting two value returns. Notice how that this function returned two values. So this function also returned two values because that was the result, the two values passed down. Um, let's do something a little different. Let's try and store that value. And we're gonna store it into x now. No, let's not do x, let's do temp. You can already imagine that we're gonna get a problem here because we're saying, hey, we've got two things coming back from this, but we're trying to store it into one thing. What's going to happen? Let's just run it and see. Ah, right. So this is a problem. We have two values being returned from here, but now we're trying to store them into one place, one this one variable here. So we're only returning one. That's kind of disappointing. So what we do instead, let's do in test two, is we can use something kind of like destructuring um, called multiple value bind. And then we say we want to bind the two results. And let's take our function call from before. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, I must admit. And we're going to return a list of the two results this time, rather than multiple values. We're going to return A and B. And let's just clean up, compile, and then go test 2 with 20. Now we can see we've got a list of 60 and 800. So what happened here? We called this function, it returned two things. We couldn't just store two things into one place. So we had to pass it along to this, which is able to destructure, like, uh, it's not destructure, bind those two separate values to two separate variables. And then we can use those how we like. We could also carry on returning them as multiple values. Um, this is a very long-winded way of doing something rather simple, um, because in this case, we could have just, you know, called this directly. Let's turn that back to list. Now, there's a, a bundle of things you can do uh, with values that are coming back. And we'll just look at a couple of cases. So maybe 
you want to return a varying number of values. This is only ever going to return two values. Um, bfun test three. Um, so this is going to take a number of arguments, any number of arguments, and then I've got to see if I'm probably going to get this wrong. Let's see. Um, multiple value list, I think, is the function. Um, no, it's not this way around. It's ah, oh, multiple values. No. Let's see what it was. I always forget this one. There's one that can take a list of values and turn them into multiple returns. And I've forgotten what it is. Blast. Hmm. That's a shame. Right, okay, I'm gonna have to skip that one for now. Let's actually, no, let's uh, let's just go and find it. Let's go and see where it is. Um, evaluation compilation is probably in here. Actually, let's just go to the symbols and just look under the multiple value stuff. So multiple value um, list it's here, something like this. Values list, that's what it's called. Cool, so now we do values list. And we pass in args. I want this to be called args rather than arg. Test three. Test three. And let's just pass in nothing and we get no value back. That's an interesting case actually. Pass in one value and we get one return value. Pass in two values and we get two. Notice this isn't a list, this is multiple values. Um, so that's how we convert from a list to multiple value returns. How about the other way around? Let's say we've got, let's say we're calling a test, which returns two things. Let's clear this over here, actually. We're calling test with 10 and 20, and it's returning two things, but we want to just turn this straight into a list of the two things. In that case, we can call, this is the one I thought of earlier, oops, multiple value list. And this takes those two separate return values and turns it into a list. So um, while there is more to this, I think that's probably a good place to stop for now. Um, I would recommend looking into multiple value call, which is kind of like fun call, but taking multiple values, getting turned into the arguments. You might want to look at, well, there's a few things you can look at. And if you just go to the hyperspec and um, let's see whereabouts we are. In the data flow control um, section of the spec, you can find a number of interesting uh, different multiple value related functions. So I will catch you next time. Thanks for joining me. And uh, we'll probably cover some more of this multiple value stuff in the future.